So you want to be a real estate investor, but where do you start? How do you know what information and sources to trust? That's where I come in. I'm Johnny Catani, and this is the Investor Relations Real Estate Podcast. Hey guys, real quick, before we start, go to investwithkatani.com and download my free ebook, Is Commercial Real Estate Recession Proof? Now to today's show. What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the Investor Relations Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Catani, and today I'm joined by Kevin Gardner. Kevin spent nearly 20 years with Comcast and was responsible for managing the team that negotiated agreements with multifamily property owners. For multifamily property owners across the country and their management companies, Kevin's experience has resulted in favorable contract terms and improved net operating income. These telecommunications agreements are important even if owners do not pay their residents cable or internet as access to their property has value. Must helps owners realize this value. Must serves clients across the country with a few, with as few as 100 units to ones with thousands. In 2021, Must clients increased their NOI by more than $4 million, resulting in an increase in asset value of over $100 million. Kevin, welcome to the show. Thanks, Johnny. And thanks for pointing out that I need to kind of maybe pair that uh, intro back a little bit. Seemed a little, seemed a little long. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a good one, right? We got to cover all the things and let the audience know what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. It's always, uh, I like doing the live intros, though, just to see how guests react <laughs> after I do, after I do it. So uh, that's part of the fun for me. Um, but very excited to chat today. Um, definitely something that not a lot of people talk about, right? But certainly this is a business. So anytime we can, you know, cut revenue or save costs anywhere um, is always going to help. So let's kind of start at the beginning here. How did you, you know, obviously you spent a lot of time with Comcast, you know, kind of talk about how Musk came to be. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was with Comcast for so long, great company, but man, I love that entrepreneurial stuff, you know, and it was just too big of a company for me. I mean, gosh, they've done so well and I'm, I, I still have friends there. So, you know, kudos to them, but man, I like, I liked it when it was small and, and we were kind of like independent and making our own decisions and, and things like that. And um, so we started our own company and ironically um, Comcast and um, Charter or, or Spectrum were two of our initial clients. So they asked us to go out and represent them as a third party with property owners and negotiate a deal on their behalf. So um, we did that and we did that pretty well for a number of years. And then they kind of said, you know what? We've, we've kind of reached a point where we've got a lot of contracts in place. We've got enough people that are employees to do this. We're no longer gonna use third parties to do this anymore. So there we are sitting at the, the negotiating table, right? Um, without, a, without a client. So we just jumped on the other side and started helping property owners. And, uh, you know, we took that experience we had, and then we just, we, we started uh, sharing this information with property owners, because one of the things we found, Johnny, is, like you said, they just don't know what's available to them. They don't know that this is an opportunity to generate incremental revenue that they're, they're not currently. And, you know, we're not talking about, you know, in, in a hundred unit property, we're not, we're not talking about you know, a million dollars in asset value or anything crazy like that. But like you said earlier, it's just the little things. You take care of enough of those little things, they start adding up to be big things. And, um, you know, I like the intro said, I think we, we, we did over $4 million of net operating income increases last year for our clients. And, you know, if you apply just the conservative cap rate, right? What is that? 80, $100 million in asset value? So, you know, that's proof that a lot of those little things do add up. I love it. Yeah, you you really nailed it there. It's super important. What's the old adage? A penny saved is worth more than a penny earned or whatever, or a dollar saved. So so anytime, like I said, you know, you can kind of um, get into that revenue and it's a business, right? So those are the things we're, we're looking for as operators. So let's kind of get into it. You know what exactly is it that that you guys offer and do for for the uh, properties? 
Well, what, what most people don't realize is that um, I know we talked earlier and you're in Salt Lake City, right? So the, the cable operator in Salt Lake City is Comcast. And Comcast has a non-exclusive franchise to operate in the city of, Saint, of, of Salt Lake, Salt Lake City. So what that gives them is the right to be in the public easement. That's all it gives them. It doesn't give them the right to be on anybody's personal property. But you as a homeowner want Comcast service, right? Best in the market, I gotta have it, let me, let me get the service. You as a homeowner can sign their work order and say, as part of that, yeah, this is a service I want. This is um, you know, I, what I'm gonna pay. And oh, by the way, I'm giving you permission to be on my personal property to give me service. Well, take that a step further and, and move it over into the multifamily space. If you own a hundred unit property in Salt Lake City, and I'm one of your residents, and I want to be the customer of Comcast, Comcast needs your permission to be on your property before I can become a, a, a customer. So with that, obviously, there's, there's value. And that's where we step in, and we help you realize that value. Um, now, they may already be on your property, right? You buy property, and, and oftentimes they are. But what we find is that the original agreement that allowed them to be there has either expired or it's on auto renew or, or something else that makes that gives us a window of opportunity to negotiate a new agreement. Okay, and are you negotiating? So if Comcast is the, the cable provider in that or telecommunications provider in that area, you're negotiating directly with them on behalf of the property owners? Correct, we get a letter of authorization which basically says you give us permission to act on your behalf, act, not agree to anything, not execute, not do anything like that. At the end of the day, we can present to you what we feel is the best possible offer and a contract. If you don't sign it, it, it does, our efforts, it doesn't matter. You don't have to sign it. We're not, we, we cannot act as, as your agent to commit you to anything. So we do all the legwork and then we come to you and Johnny, say, Johnny, here's the deal. This best deal. We think it's, you know, based on the market, we think it's a great deal, um, you know, but it, ultimately it's up to you. And we've done that before. We've done all that stuff. And we've had owners say, nah, is that, I mean, I know that's the best we can do, but I don't think it's, it's really worth it. I'm going to pass. You know what? In the last couple of weeks, we revisited this property. We decided to sell it instead. So, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and, and that's okay because we want to build long-term relationships. You know, a lot of a lot of owners are just acquiring more and more properties and we want to be there for all of them. Right. So we want to step in when they get new properties and and we work 100 percent on commission. 100 percent. No retainer, no hourly, no nothing. We get paid a percentage of what you get paid. So therefore, our goals are 100 percent aligned. Right. Because the more you get, the more I get. And okay. And so that... just... Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. We just think that's a, a good model, right? Because then there's no question. Um, we don't get paid by Comcast or Spectrum. We are your agent acting on your behalf, solely on your behalf. And we get paid a percentage of, of what you get paid. And it's, it's based on, you know, the more you get, the more we get. Makes perfect sense. So kind of get into the weeds here. What, what are these negotiations look like? You know, let's say it's 100 units. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it really comes down to, to leverage, right? Um, and they'll look at the property because they're not just nice guys writing out checks for the, for the heck of it, right? I mean, they're going to look at it and they're going to say, okay, this is a C-class property. I have out of 100 units, I have 25 video customers and maybe 30 internet customers. Maybe you've got low occupancy. I don't know why that would be, but then they can only, they run their R R ROI model and say, here's what we can generate. Here's the window, you know, of, of what we can generate. And it's our job to make sure that we're, we're pushing it to get the, the most for that. Um, whereas an A-class property may be worth more because they, you know, it's fully occupied. Almost everybody has internet service in there. Uh, they pay their bills on time. They don't move out in and out as often as possible. All these things impact their financial model. So we work with them and, and those things drive what kind of compensation we can get for um, each property. The other thing that drives it is how many units, how many, I mean, 
what are we talking about here? You know, if Johnny has one 120 um, unit property, probably not really going to get much, if anything, for that. Uh, you know, one C class 20. If we're talking about, you know, 1600 A class units, then we're probably going to get a little bit more per unit. Um, this actually happened to us in Dallas. Um, we had an owner with 74 units. This was like two years ago, 74 units. We went, we took, we negotiated for them. We, we got a, a reasonable offer and they were kind of like, ah, kind of hoping to get more. What else can we do? And so what we did is we went out and they knew other owners and he put us in contact with other owners and we got more units. And so we're negotiating on behalf of 1600 units now and 74 was part of that 1600. We got, you know, it, it, it kind of like, you know, all, all boats, you know, what is it? All, all boats rise in the, in, in the, in the tide or whatever it is. Right. But, you know, their 74 came up with everybody else's. So we ended up getting them more than twice as much um, on the proposal when we put the 74 in with the other 15, 1600. Okay. So let me make sure I understand this correctly. By going in, into this negotiation, Comcast or, or the telecommunications company is actually paying right. the property owner a fee, like an, a certain amount, so that their customer or their residents only use them. And then I assume the ROI model is based on like, we give you this amount because we assume that we'll be able to make this much over time. Is that how it yeah, works? Yes, very close. Um, there's two basic types of contracts. One is called just an access agreement or uh, a, um, a non-bulk uh, non agreement. And what that means is you're just letting them on the property to provide service to the residents. If the residents take it, great. If they don't, then that's up to them. You're, you have no obligation there other than maybe to help them market their service, but you are not removing any other options from your, your property. So, for example, if, if AT&T or, or Lumen, who used to be CenturyLink, might be there or, you know, Frontier, if they're still there, they're still there and they're still allowed to be there. You're not kicking anybody off. You're not saying you can only take Comcast. You can say Comcast is our preferred provider. You can say things like that, but you are not el eliminating any choice. So there's really no downside for your residents. Um, also, your residents do not pay any incremental fee because you're now in an agreement. They don't get any favorable rates, but they don't get any unfavorable either. There is, um, you know, everybody in, in Salt Lake City, there's a rate card that says, this is the rate card. You pay this or lower if you have a promotional offer. You just moved into town, want to be a new customer, things like that. So that's a non-exclusive agreement. And what typically happens is we get you a signing bonus or what's called a door fee in the industry. And that's a per unit um, payment. And that's paid one time up front. Okay. So that kind of reflects what's this property worth now? So it, it, we're going we're gonna to pay you this. And then on an ongoing basis for the term of the agreement, we're going to pay you a percentage of the revenue for helping us market, for allowing us to be on there, you know, on your property, for maybe um, having us positioned as your preferred provider, you know, things like that. So then you'll get ongoing revenue share, which is typically paid out um, every quarter. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. And then That's it the sounds one. like there's, there's also a bulk agreement as well, which is set Correct. up differently. Yeah. So bulk agreement is where you, as the owner, pay for service for every one of your units and you offer it basically as an amenity, right? Right. So, you know, and now I said every one of your units, not your residents, because, the, you know, I like to present the pros and cons. In some ways, in some markets, this is absolutely necessary um, most people in certain markets use this, others, other markets are, are different. So that's what we like to understand your portfolio, your investing goals, you know, things like that up front before we make any recommendations or even, you know, um, contemplate for you what you might be able to, to earn. And that's why everyone is, everyone is different, right? I mean, if you're, if you're going to buy this property and you're going to hold it for and create generational wealth with, for it, you know, uh, for your family with it, you know what? Bulk might be a great thing. 
but bulk is a fixed payment every month for every one of your units, regardless of whether or not it's occupied, whether the, the, the resident uses it or wants it. So you have to take that into, into account. It's just like your, your, your gym, right? If you have a workout facility on, it's there and you gotta maintain it and, and keep it up. But if the residents don't use it, then you still have, it doesn't, it doesn't impact your, your cost to, to put that in there. So, so that's what the, the bulk is. Now, on the flip side, you know, if, if internet is a perceived value of, of 50 or 60 or $70, depending on the market and what kind of speed you take, and you can buy it for 30 or 35 or 40, you can maybe increase your rent by 50. And if you're paying 30, then that's 20, 20 more on each. Now that's going to be more than any revenue share you're going to get. So there's, it, it, it's a gamble. It really is. And you have to know your property. You have to know because some people don't want that. And, and when we went through COVID, people were like, don't give me any more fixed costs. I, I don't want them because I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to rent my units. I don't know if I'm going to be able to collect the rent I, I have. I don't know what's going on. My re revenue is, is you know, unpredictable. I don't want to increase costs. So we saw kind of a decline there in interest. Now it's kind of waning back a little bit more. And it does depend on the market. So um, yeah, those are the two types of contracts, uh, non-bulk, bulk for um, lack of, uh, for, for simplicity's sake. Awesome. Yeah, that was a great explanation. Makes perfect sense. <clears throat> I've heard of both. I guess I just didn't realize that there was someone actually negotiating those. I know that sometimes um, property owners will just do it on their own behalf. So I guess now mm -hmm. kind of talk about what determines whether, like you mentioned, you don't work with anyone in Salt Lake City. Is it just no one's hired you or how does that work in terms of what markets you guys are in and what markets you you're out of? Well, we can be in any market. I mean, we can do business in any market. It just so happens that we've not had clients that have had properties in Salt Lake city um, to date. Right. So we're always trying to acquire new product, uh, new clients, uh, new portfolios. Um, for some reason, you know, it's kind of where, where we are already. We just keep expanding in those areas we do a lot of business in North Carolina, in Texas, in Indiana, Tennessee, South Carolina. I mean, you know, those tend to, those for us, for some reason, are more, you know, more, I don't know, active for us. Um, but we, we, we do business, um, you know, throughout the U.S. And it's just a matter of, of where our clients are buying for the most part. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I mean, you pretty much just listed, you know, some of the top markets, <laughs> uh, which, you know, obviously, like I said, ma makes perfect sense as to why that's where you're most active. And, and sounds like uh, you said Charlotte was like the top. Uh, North Carolina in general is, okay. is ours. I mean, there's a lot of great markets there. Um, you know, everything we, we, we do, everything from Winston-Salem to Charlotte to Greensboro to, you know, I mean, all, all throughout the state. Okay. And kind of going back, it sounds like <clears throat> you had mentioned that below 50 units is it doesn't really make much sense to kind of get into these negotiations. Is that correct? Well, here's the thing below 20. No, we're not going to be able to do anything 20 to 50. If I've got other stuff going in that market, we may be able to do something. And depending on who the provider is, we've used Comcast extensively as an example, because that's where I, I've, you know, worked in, and, you know, they're the provider in Salt Lake City, but others, there's, you know, the 50 to 100, if you got 100, it's usually something we can do, right? That's kind of the sweet spot. But policy is, for every, every time we don't ask, we know we're not getting anything, right? So I would rather have somebody contact me and say, hey, here's what I got, and me say, you know what, that's not a possibility than to have them assume that it's not a possibility. And since we're and since we're only getting paid if we get you money, there's really no harm in you know having us take a look at it. So we do what I mean what we call a free assessment of any portfolio anybody wants us to take a look at. It. Yeah. So kind of um, touch on that. What what does that look like? Yeah. All we need is is for a uh, potential client, uh, owner of, of or property management company to send us a list of their portfolio, name of the property, the primary address of the property, the number of units. 
And from that, we can go and find out what the opportunities are. Because the first thing we have to find out is, is it even an opportunity based on size, based on the provider, uh, who's in that market? And then we have to take it another step and say, is there already a contract in place? And a lot of owners think that there's no contract in place. Well, I've never seen a contract. Well, that's because the contract was signed like 30 or 40 years ago, and it's with three owners ago, and you know it didn't get transferred at, at one of those points. But there's still a contract because the the cable company can or or internet company, right? I mean, we do business with AT and T as well. We do business with um, you know other providers. We do business with independent providers in some cases. We will look at different options and find the best solution. We like to present solutions and then let the owner think through it and figure out what's best for them. We will certainly advise, but um, we want them to, to know all their options. Okay, it makes perfect sense. And so cable is obviously the, the predominant source for, for internet um, telecommunications, but you know, um, fiber is taking over. So you mentioned that you work with independent companies. So if it's like a fiber company or fibers available in the area, you can also negotiate with them as well. Are they open to that, those kinds of things? Absolutely. And, and for example, um, you know, in, in some of the Midwest markets, AT&T is expanding rapidly and putting fiber and replacing their, their, you know, their copper system. And so they're putting fiber in and, um, you know, we, we are doing deals with them all the time. Okay. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. I mean, I live out in the suburbs and we haven't quite gotten fiber out here yet, but I definitely would like it. Um, Comcast though has come a long way. I'm sure obviously you were yeah. there for a long time. So, you know, yeah. that there was probably like a five-year period where they were just no fun to work with in any way, but still had such a, you know, dominant market share that you really had no choice. Um, but they kind of rebranded the Xfinity thing and, yeah. and kind of, you know, fix all of that, which is nice. Um, and now I don't feel so bad having to use them because they're literally the only option that I have. Well, and that's just it, right? I mean, nobody likes to be forced to like, this is my only option, right? I mean, nobody likes it when that's their only option. Um, you know, but, but Comcast does not have an exclusive franchise. Anybody else could come in there and get a non-exclusive franchise. It's just that the, it costs so much to build a cable system and maintain a cable system and everything like that, that nobody else wants to come in because once you put a second provider in there, you know, the, the return on investment isn't as great. So they'd rather go where there maybe isn't as formidable uh, uh, an offering as, as Comcast has. So it's not like Comcast has said, hey, Salt Lake City, man, Here's some here's some money or something. We're make sure we're the only guys in town. That's that's not the case whatsoever. Yeah, they just have obviously the capital and the infrastructure to yeah. be nimble and move and and you know they've obviously put themselves in in most of the top markets. So that you know that's a huge piece and and they make it so easy, right? And and that's really what what people are after. So it's hard for these independent companies to come in. I believe there there is one called Utopia. I think it's uh, a fiber company, but they don't okay. have much reach. Um, so let's kind of come full circle here. Here, um, So, you know, we talked about the different uh, agreement types. You guys do your uh, free assessment and then your compensation, your win-win compensation model. That's just you not getting paid unless the owner gets paid. Right. Yep. Okay. Awesome. And so what kind of misconceptions are there? You know, why aren't more owners doing this and going after this and, and, and trying to, to save these costs or, or see what, what offers they can get? I think it just comes down to education. You know, we deal with a lot of um, people who are new to the, the business and just getting their first property or their first, you know, couple of properties. And they're kind of so overwhelmed and, and they're just not thinking about it because it's not a, it, in the situation where um, they aren't doing bulk, it's not a bill for them. It doesn't show up on their P&L. So it's not something that grabs their attention and they don't realize it. So they just kind of like, you know, we do a lot of education. That's why I love uh, appearing on shows like yours, Johnny. I mean, it's, it's awesome to be able to just educate more people that this is an opportunity. This is, you know, 
this is an opportunity for you to improve your NOI and, and therefore your, your asset value. Absolutely. And so what's the difference between a property owner going and, and trying to negotiate on their own versus uh, bringing you guys in? Um, you know, I guess the, 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 I guess that it's the same as me trying to change my own oil in my garage versus going and getting it done in 10 minutes by somebody who's a professional who does that all the time, who knows where everything is and knows what to do. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, we have relationships. We've been in this business for a long time. Um, plus it's our time. You know, a lot of these owners have so much else that they can do. Um, so our process is as turnkey and as automated as, as possible. Um, anything we need signed, we use DocuSign and, and things like that. So and we've tried to make it as simple as, as possible. And at the end of the day, if they don't like the offer that we have presented to them, you know, knowing that we know the ins and outs and we were on the other side of the table at one point, you know, they don't have to take it. Makes perfect sense. I love that. It's so true. It's such a, you know, like such a necessary thing, right. To at least analyze. And like you said, it's really just comes down to not knowing, you know, yeah. it's like a lot of the, it's just one of those nuanced things that you don't really think about, especially as a new, you know, new operator, you're just getting into it, maybe acquired your first property, your first couple, and you're just not aware that it's possible. And, you know, there are other potentially more, you know, if you take on a big value add project, really, you know, your focus is, you know, maybe you need a new roof or there's other things that, you know, take priority. Yep. However, down the line, it is important to touch on these things. And like you said, you know, like we said earlier, anytime you can save on the bottom line, that's, that's going to help improve, improve that NOI. So I love it. This has been great. Um, we are running up against time. So I do have five questions that I ask all of my guests. It's the final five. The first one is what's the best advice you've gotten from a mentor? Uh, probably two things, never give up, but also things take longer than you would expect they would. Now that second one's so true, right? And as it human, it really is. It really is. We're wired impatiently, especially in today's day. Yep. Um, yeah. Cool. What is it about your career that makes you feel like you're fulfilling your why? Um, you know, this is this is my business. My part. I've got a partner, and I have other people that I work with that um, I like. It's given me the ability to have a flexible schedule. I've got a son that lives in Chicago, and. I've got the ability to, you know, work on the road and, and spend more time with him. Um, you know, I, I, I like helping other people. I really do. Um, and I guess that's my why is help other people. I mean, do we get paid for it? Absolutely. But does the other person benefit? Yes. And that's why we created the win-win, you know, compensation is I do like helping other people. I get a lot out of that. I love that. That's what I love about this industry. Uh, what's your favorite uh, non-real estate or investment related? Well, first of all, do you invest as well? Are, are you a passive investor? Not at the moment, but it's okay. within the 12 to 18 month um, goals window. Love it. Uh, so favorite non-real estate or investment related book? or You know what? I, this is where I should probably, a college friend of mine has written a couple of books and I should probably give him a shameless plug here. Absolutely. But I'll be uh, um, he, he, uh, Todd Saylor's written um, Wired Differently and Drift Again. But honestly, best book. I love it to death. There's two of them. Uh, Go, the Go-Giver. Great and book. All, also the Chris Voss book. Never Split the Difference. Never Split the Difference. Yep. Great yep. one. Yeah. So I didn't really answer your question. Honestly, if I had to pick one of those, Never Split the Difference. Love it. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? God, man. That's probably the toughest question I've ever had. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm content the way things are, man. I don't know. You don't want to be able to fly or anything? No. I mean, they got airplanes <laughs> for that, you know? Fair. Um, I guess I'd like, I'd like the superpower of being able to get my dog to just take a nap while I'm doing podcasts because she's been like running around in the background. I don't know if you could tell or not, but man, if I could get her to, to just, 
chill for the, this time. That would be a great superpower. I know my dog, uh, I, I close my office door, but um, I can hear him like when he's bored or wants to let me know that he needs attention, he'll like lay by the door and like let out a huge sigh. And then just like, all right, I think you're going to be okay. Don't worry. <laughs> I, you know what? I guess as I sit here and think about it, my mo if I could have a superpower, it would be for um, the ability to have everybody in this world be a little bit more great grateful. Gosh, that would be nice, huh? Love that. Um, awesome. And last question: What's the best way for people to get a hold of you and uh, you know reach out and learn more about your services? Finally, an easy one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, our, our website's uh, multifamilyutilitiesolutions.com, and and I'm Kevin at multifamilyutilitiesolutions.com. Uh, my phone number's on there. It's 248-930-4768. Awesome. We will link that in the show notes. Kevin, thank you so much. This has been awesome. Johnny, enjoyed it. Thanks so much for having me on. Absolutely. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you really enjoyed it. Listen, I know it's cliche and you hear it all the time, but please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you know when the next video is coming out. Even though this is technically a daily podcast, you know it's coming out the next day. Uh, we have a ton of content coming your way. So please like and subscribe. It helps a ton. Leave comments. We'd love to know what you guys think. And uh, we will see you on the next one. Thanks so much.